Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Cracking Dentistry. So in the last video, we actually saw the introduction on odontogenic cyst where we discussed about the development of tooth, the various classifications, especially WHO 2005 and 2017 classification and we actually focused on the changes that were made in this 2017 classification. Today we'll be seeing the gingival cyst of newborn, also known as the dental lamina cyst of newborn. Now, the speciality or the uniqueness of the cyst is that it is one of the three keratinizing cysts. That is, this is one of the odontogenic cysts which is keratinizing by nature. The other two keratinizing cysts are the odontogenic keratocyst and the orthokeratinized odontogenic cyst. Now, today, I'll be giving you a brief introduction on gingival cyst of newborn. We'll see the histogenesis, its clinical features, histopathological features, the differential diagnosis of various lesions which are going to resemble this entity, treatment and the prognosis of this cyst. Now, gingival cyst of newborn is actually a small superficial keratin filled cyst which is most commonly seen in the alveolar mucosa of an infant, conventionally in infants who are younger than 3 months old. Now, this lesion actually spontaneously undergoes rupture and disappear by releasing its content into the oral cavity. So, being a self-limiting entity, it is sel seldom biopsy. Again, it occurs in very young people like it occurs in, in individuals who are younger than three months old hence we try not to do any invasive procedure so we just wait and watch procedure for this entity so this particular cyst is believed to arise from the remnants of the dental lamina or the cell rest of serine this particular concept is widely accepted so, the dental lamina actually is believed to retain its ability to proliferate even after it undergoes involution. So, the remnants will undergo proliferation, then keratinize and undergo cystic transformation, giving rise to the gingival cyst of newborn. Moscow and Bloom, they actually told, like proposed that prior to separation of tooth germ from the oral epithelium, the dental lamina has the tendency to form multiple distinct keratinizing cysts. They also proposed that the disintegration of the dental lamina actually occurs in the morphodifferentiation or the early bell stage. Now, the remnants of this dental lamina are actually seen in the corium between the tooth germ and the oral epithelium. These dental lamina remnants actually evolve into small cysts expand rapidly causing thinning of the overlying epithelium. This can form a clinically visible lesion with some undergoing rupture and few actually degenerating and disappearing with the keratin and the debris being digested or removed by the multinucleated giant cells. So in the clinical features, so this is most commonly seen in infants who are younger than 3 months of uh, age. It is seldom seen or very rarely seen in those who are older than 3 months of age. There is no sexual or racial predilection reported. But however, in 1983, in one study conducted the Ikumura in Japan, he found that 90% of infants who are younger than 3 months of age actually had this particular cyst. Now, the side predilection, it has a distinct predilection for the maxillary alveolar process. Now, it presents as small, single or multiple white papules on the alveolar mucosa. Histopathologically, it presents as a well-circumscribed lesion which is either round or ovoid in shape. The lumen is actually lined by a parakeratinized stratified squamous epithelium with the basal cells being flat. So, the epithelial lining is going to resemble the reduced enamel epithelium of the enamel organ except for the keratinization part. Now, the epithelium lined cleft between the cyst and the oral epithelial will actually give pressure so, what happens is overlying epithelium will become stretched and atrophic. 
so coming to the differential diagnosis so uh, the it can resemble an eruption cyst but however the eruption cyst is actually produced in association with an unerupted tooth so the tooth has erupted out of the bone but is being held by the thick fibrous gingiva so it's not able to erupt outside now when there is any trauma to the eruption cyst it forms a blue tinged lesion called as an eruption hemangioma so this eruption hemangioma also again is associated with an unerupted tooth gingival cyst of newborn however is not associated with the tooth and hence can be distinguished from this next is mucosal so mucosal is actually a cyst that is developing in the minor salivary gland or a major salivary gland tissue so this is most commonly seen in the buccal mucosa labial mucosa that is your lip region but gingival cyst is always seen in the alveolar process of a neonate again this uh, mucosal kindly occurs in a older in older age group than that which is seen with the gingival cyst of newborn next the most conventional differential diagnosis are the palatal cyst of newborn which is the epstein pearls and the bonds nodule now the epstein pearl is actually presenting as a single or multiple whitish papule seen along the mid palatine raphe of an infant so this is believed to be caused by the entrapment of epithelium along the fusion line between the palatal shells and the nasal process so histopathologically this will resemble exactly the gingival cyst of newborn next is the bonds nodule so now bonds nodules is mostly produced by the entrapment of the remnants of the minor salivary gland tissue so this is seen along the junction of the hard and soft palate and also sometimes is seen dispersed along the uh, posterior lateral aspect of the hard palate so occasionally it is seen in the buccal aspect of the alveolar process also thereby making the distinction from the gingival cyst of newborn very difficult so this is a picture which is showing the different positions of these gingival and palatal cyst of newborn so you can see that the middle portion of the palate you can see the epstein pearls along the lingual aspect of the palate you can see the bonds nodules and along the alveolar process the gingival cyst of newborn is seen so treatment as such for this cyst is not necessary because this cyst will undergo spontaneous resolution that is it will rupture on its own and release its content into the oral cavity and resolves on its own so being a self limiting entity it has a very good prognosis